Hey guys, welcome back to another software engineer interview question. Today we're going to take a look at a very common interview question, which is the to some question. And the question is, given an array of integers, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. So you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice. So as an example, we have an array that has values 2, 7, 12, and 8. And we're saying our target is 15. So we need to find two numbers in that array that add up to 15. Now, by just taking a look at the array, we can see that the answer is 7 and 8. And that's why we return the indices 1 and 3, because 1 represents 7 and 3 represents 8. So your goal is to write an algorithm to do this. And once again, I have a basic stub set up. So the main method has the array, the target, and I have a method set up called toSum that takes in the array and target and returns an int array. So it's just an int array with the first value being the first indice and the second value being the second indice. And then I simply just display the two indices. So you can copy this code and then your job would be to implement this method. So go ahead, you can pause the video now and attempt this problem. All right guys, welcome back. So I hope you were successful and you came up with a solution. And now we're gonna go through one together. And there's actually two common solutions to this problem. Um, we have the brute force solution and then we have a slightly better optimized version. So the brute force solution for this is to simply create two loops and start at two. In this case, we'll start at two and seven and we'll check. So we'll say, is two plus seven 15? No, okay. Is two plus 12 15? No, okay. Is two plus eight 15? No, okay. And then it goes, then it goes, is seven plus 12 15 and so on. So to accomplish that brute force technique, we have to use two loops, which means the time, the time complexity would be um, big O of n squared. Um, and we can do a little bit better than that. The good thing about that solution is that the space complexity would be constant um, because we don't have to create any extra data structures to help us out. Um, but once again, the quadratic time complexity is not the best. So a better solution, we can actually get linear time complexity for this. However, in order to accomplish that, we need to have linear space as well. And the way we can solve this problem is by using a hash table. Now, in the C sharp language, a hash table is implemented through the dictionary class. So we'll use a dictionary in our implementation in C sharp. But whatever language you're using, you would just use a hash table. And the reason why we choose a hash table is because hash tables have constant lookup speed and that will help us keep our time complexity down. Um, so the solution to this problem without using a nested loop is pretty straightforward. So we start off creating a pointer to the first value and this pointer is going to be a standard loop. It's gonna go through every single value once. And the idea is this, we look at the first value wherever I is pointing and we say, we need to find a value that's this value plus another to equal 15. And we can actually figure out what the only possible value will be besides this by doing simple math. We can find its complement. And that's simply just a simple formula to say, let's take our target value minus our current value. So in this case, that would be 15 minus two, which means our complement is 13. So the only other number that could be in this array would be 13 that would make this indice zero for two be the correct answer. Um, so since we don't have, we're not gonna scan through the entire list right now, we're going to just check our dictionary and we'll say, hey, is 13 in our dictionary? And since 13 is not in our dictionary, we go, okay, let's add two to it and then let's move on to the next value. The reason why we're adding two is because if there was a 13 in the, in the collection, we'll eventually come to it, which is our complement. And then when we hit 13, we'll say 15 minus 13 and the complement would be two. And since we added it to our 
uh, dictionary, we would know and we would be able to find the complement. Um, if you look in the dictionary, the key is two, so that, rep that represents the value, and the value of our dictionary element is the the indice or the index, because that's what we really care about when we need to return. So once again, I went to seven, so let's run through the pattern again. So we say our complement is 15 minus seven, so we're looking for a value eight. So since eight is not currently in the dictionary, we'll add the seven to it so that if we ever come across an eight, we know, oh, that was our second pair or our second number. Okay, then I goes to 12. Okay, so 12 or 15 minus 12 is three. Is three in the dictionary? No, it's not. So we'll add three to our dictionary. And then finally, I gets to the end, which is our eight. So 15 minus eight is our complement seven. And remember, we already passed seven. So seven is in our dictionary. So when we check for seven this time, we say, yeah, it's in the dictionary and its value is one. The value represents the position in the array. So number seven is in position one. So what we can do is we can take both the, the value in the dictionary and the value of I and return that in a new array. So that would be one and three, and that would be our answer. So remember, this solution is linear time, and you know that because I went through the array only one time in respect to the amount of elements. And then we also had to create an extra um, data structure, a hash table, to help us manage and keep track of the previous numbers, and that gives us a space complexity of linear, so a big O of N of that. So now let's go ahead and try to implement this. All right, here we are back in my C Sharp application, and we're now going to implement that exact algorithm. I just want to make sure you're double checking in your code stub if you're using the same numbers that I'm using. I'm using the example here, but I had 18, so just make sure you change this to 8. The correct values are 2, 7, 12, 8, with a target of 15. And the answer for that should be 1 and 3, or 3 and 1, however you program it. All right, let's go ahead and implement this. So remember in the algorithm, the first thing we did was we created a hash table. And in the C-sharp language, that's implemented using a dictionary. So I'll create a dictionary. And this is in the systems collections generic namespace. You can go ahead and add that. So this dictionary's key will be an int and the value will be an int. Remember, the the key here is the value of the comp or the value of the element in the array, and then the the value of this key value pair is representing the index. And then we have the name of it, so I'll call it prev numbers and then I'll instantiate it. Then in my algorithm. I went through each element of the array one time. So let's just create a for loop that will iterate from the beginning all the way to the end of the array. Now, for each element of my array, I want to generate and calculate the complement because that's the number that we're looking for in our dictionary. So I'll say int complement equals, and that's going to be target minus the current value in the array, so array sub i. Then we want to say, does this complement exist in our dictionary? If it does, then pull out its pull out its index, because that's one of the, the, the possible, or that's one of the correct answers in this case. So we'll say if prev numbers dot contains key, and then we'll plug in the complement. So if that is true, then we have our answer because we have the current index and then we have the index in our dictionary since we already have our complement. So we'll say return new int array and the first value will be the value inside the dictionary. So we'll say prev numbers sub complement. That's our key that will return the value. And the other index is i. Right, that's the position that we're currently in in the array. Now, if the dictionary does not contain our complement, then we need to add the current value, the, the current position's value that we're in in the array into the dictionary with its index, respectively. 
So we'll say prev numbers dot add, and then we need a key. So that will be num or sorry array sub i, and then the value will be the index value. So that would be i. And then if we ever make it down here, that means that either the target wasn't in the array or that it was an empty array. So I'll just say return null. And in this case, we're not going to return null because our example works, but you could do whatever you wanted here. You could throw an exception. Um, you could talk to your interviewer and ask what they expect or want for that. Okay, so, but that's the algorithm. And since we have a, a set that works here, the answer should be one three. So let's see. And when we run the program, it says one three. So it worked. So that's how you implement two sum. And once again, the time complexity of this is linear, big O of n, and the space complexity is also linear, big O of n.